Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Strong Math. In this video, today we will discuss about how do you revise your mathematics syllabus of class 10 of CBSC board before your board's exam. So basically, in this video, you will learn how to revise your mathematics syllabus quickly. At first, take a look at the course structure of class 10. There are 7 units and the respective unit names are given and their respective marks are given. In this video, we will discuss about the first two units that is number system and algebra. Number system carries 6 marks, algebra carries 20 marks, next coordinate geometry 6 marks, Geometry 15 marks, Trigonometry 12 marks, Mensuration 10 marks, Statistics and Probability 11 marks and the total marks of your mathematics paper is 80. In this video, we will discuss about only two units that is number system and algebra. In unit 1, name of the topic is number system and you can easily find out the chapter named real number in your NCRT maths books. At first, let us discuss what are the topics are given in this chapter. Remember, at the very beginning of your class 10, you had learned about Euclid's division lemma. What is Euclid's division lemma? For any two positive integers a and b, there exist two unique integers q and r, obviously positive integers, such that a equals to bq plus r where 0 less equals to r less than b. Moving on, next fundamental theorem of arithmetic that is any composite number can be re expressed as the product of prime factors. You have to remember these statements and by applying these statements you have to solve some problems. Next, there are some important questions related to proofs of irrationality of root 2, root 3, root 5 and their combinations. For short questions, decimal representation of rational numbers that is in terms of terminating, non-terminating, recurring decimals, they are also very much important. Now take a look at the important suggestive question papers related to this topic. At first, in the first question, use Euclid's division algorithm to find the HCF of these numbers. First one is 726 and 275. Next one 12576 and 4052. Next one 867 and 255. Try yourself whether you can find out the HCF by using Euclid's division algorithm or not. In this video, we will discuss about the syllabus and important questions only. If you have any query, then please do comment below so that I can help you. Next question, by Euclid's division lemma, you may have to prove that square of any positive integer is either of the form 3m or 3m plus 1 for some integer m. Use Euclid's division lemma, you have to show that Q of any positive integer is of the form 9m, 9m plus 1 or 9m plus 8. So these type of questions are very much important for your board exams. Remember the statements of Euclid's division lemma as well as fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Next, this question that is check whether 6 to the power n can end with the digit 0 for any natural number n or maybe you are asked to check whether 4 to the power n can end with 0 or not. You may get find the LCM and HCF of 306, 657. That is you have to find out LCM and HCF of any two given numbers. Maybe you have to find out the LCM where uh, whenever uh, two numbers are given. Maybe HCF is given and the numbers are given you have to find out LCM you have to remember LCM 
into HCF is equals to product of two numbers. This relation is valid for only two numbers. Moving on, the most important problem is in this chapter is the proof of irrationality. That is, you may get questions like prove that root 3 or root 5 plus 3, root 7 minus root 3 are irrational. How to prove this? Remember, at first you have to assume that root 3 or root 5 are rational number. Then you, you can write a rational in the form of P and Q. Okay, I think you get the hint. Moving on to the next unit, that is unit 2, algebra. This unit carries the most number of your mathematics paper okay so you have to practice more this unit in this unit you have four chapters the chapters are polynomials pair of linear equations in two variables quadratic equations and arithmetic progressions that is AP in the second chapter of your NCT book that is polynomials you have learned different kinds of polynomials that is monomials binomials trinomials according to their number of terms and according to their degree that is power of the polynomial you have learned linear polynomial that is polynomial of degree 1 quadratic polynomial that is polynomial of degree 2 cubic polynomial that is polynomial of degree 3 etc now in this chapter you have to find out zeros of polynomial relationship between zeros and coefficient of the quadratic polynomials and some simple problems related to zeros and coefficients of polynomial so take a look at the important questions related to polynomials look at the first question find the number of zeros from the graphs you may get this kind of problem for short questions that is from the graph you have to find out number of zeros of the polynomial you know that any kind of polynomials can be represented by a graph okay so how to find out the number of zeros by using graph remember the number of point of intersections with the x-axis of the curve is the number of zeros of that polynomial okay so for example for the first figure look the curve that is here in this case the straight line is parallel to x-axis which does not meet at any point with the x-axis so number of polynomial is zero but for the second one that curve meet at a point with the x-axis so number of zeros is one and so on so you have to remember that the number of points of intersections with x-axis gives us the number of zeros of the polynomial okay suppose there is a question like if one of the zeros of a polynomial 3x square minus 8x plus 2k plus 1 is 7 times the other then find the value of k so this type of questions is also important for your board's exam here you are given a relationship between between two zeros of this polynomial then you have to find out the value of the unknown term k in the next question verify whether 2 3 and 0.5 are the zeros of the polynomial px or not so this is a very simple question to check whether these points are zeros of the given polynomial or not you have to put 2 or 3 or 0.5 in the place of x if the value is 0 then that number will be the 0 of this polynomial suppose by putting 2 in place of x you get the value of this polynomial is 0 then 2 is a 0 of the polynomial px okay now you may get the question like find the zeros of the polynomial this and verify the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients remember the relationship between zeros and coefficients what was that 
the relationship between zeros and coefficients are sum of the zeros is equals to negative of coefficient of x by coefficient of x square and the product of the zeros is equals to constant term by coefficient of x square so here the polynomial is related to the variable y so you may get the sum of the zeros will be minus coefficient of y by coefficient of y square and product of the zeros will be the constant term that is minus 2 by 3 by coefficient of y square okay next question find all the zeros of the polynomial 2x to the power 4 minus 3x cube minus 3x square plus 6x minus 2 if you know that two of its zeros are root 2 and minus root 2 here you have to find out the other two zeros why we know that the number of zeros is equals to degree of the polynomial here the degree is 4 and two zeros are already given so at first we have to form a polynomial as x minus root 2 into x plus root 2 then we have to divide the given polynomial by so formed polynomial x minus root 2 into x plus root 2 the resulting quotient will give us gives us the other two zeros in the next question if alpha beta gamma are the zeros of the polynomial 6x cube plus 3x square minus 5x plus 1 then find the values of 1 by alpha plus 1 by beta plus 1 by gamma at first you have to find out the relationships between the zeros and the coefficients and next you have to do simple calculation to find out the value in the next question we have to find out the value of p square plus q square where p and q are the zeros of the polynomial fx here at first find out the values of p and q from the polynomial that is equating the polynomial to zero and by factorize this equation you have to find out the values of x then put the value of p and q then you will get the result or you may solve this problem by using the relationship between the zeros and the coefficient in the next question divide x cube minus 3x square plus 5x minus 3 by x square minus 2 this is a very simple problem you may do yourself another kind of important problem is find the quadratic polynomial whose sum and product of the zeros are 4 and 1 respectively so in this problem you are given the sum and product of the zeros of that polynomial remember the formula that if we know the sum and the product of the zeros of a polynomial then the quadratic polynomial will be x square minus sum of the zeros into x plus product of the zeros by using this formula you can easily find out the quadratic polynomial if in this section you have any kind of doubt please let me know in the comment section so that i can help you by solving the problems okay so let's move to the next chapter chapter number three of your NCERT book that is pair of linear equations in two variables in this chapter you have to practice the methods of finding their solutions by graphically as well as by some methods like substitution method elimination method and cross multiplication method there will be a pair of linear equations in two variables in the question paper and you have to solve the equations by using the methods of substitution or elimination or cost multiplication method you can remember that among these three methods elimination method is the best method to solve if you are not asked to do to find the solutions by using a specific method then you may try the elimination method okay 
and if you are asked to solve any problem by using a specific method then you have to solve that problem by using that particular method okay and there will be some simple problems uh, basically we say that what problems related to pair of linear equations at first you have to form pair of linear equations in two variables and you have to solve by using these kind of methods so let's discuss some important problems related to this chapter in the first question you you can see that check graphically whether the pair of equations is consistent consistent means if there exists any solution of this system or not if there is a solution that is you can easily find out the values of x as well as y then the pair of linear equations is consistent you have to take three or four points of each kind of equations and then you have to plot on the graph paper and then you have to draw the straight line if they do intersect at a point then you will get a unique solution if they are parallel then there is no solution if they coincide each other then there are infinitely many solutions okay for the second problem you have to remember what i said just a second before if the graph of two lines do intersect at a unique point at a point then there exist unique solution that is if two lines are intersecting lines then there exist a unique solution if the lines are parallel then uh, there are no solution if they coincident on each other then there exist infinitely many solutions look if two lines intersect at a point then you can easily get the coordinates of x of that point as well as the coordinates of y of that point that is you can find out the values of x and y so for two intersecting lines there exist a unique solution if two lines are parallel that is they do not meet at any point then obviously you cannot get any coordinates of a point so that these two line meet at that point so there exist no solutions that is we cannot find out any kind of values of x as well as y so for two parallel lines there exist no solution now if two lines are coincident lines then think if two coincident lines are there then there are so many points that is infinitely number of points are common in between these two lines as we know that a line consist infinitely many points on it so there exist infinitely many solutions for two coincident lines now as i state before that you have to solve linear equations by substituting method elimination method cross modality equation method here i gave three linear equations in two variables try to solve yourself if there arises any problem related to this kind of methods then let me know look at the question number 4 you have to solve the following linear equations take a look very carefully that these kind of equations are not same like the above equations here you have the unknown the variables in the reciprocal form that is 5 by x minus 1 plus 1 by y minus 2 equals to 2 and y by x minus 1 minus y by y minus 2 equals to 1 so at first you have to assume 1 by x minus 1 equals to p 
and 1 by y minus 2 as q then you have to make linear equations in terms of p and q then you have to solve for p and q after find the fi after finding the values of p and q then you have to put the values of p that is 1 by x minus 1 and 1 by y minus 2 for q then again you have to solve for x and y now for the what problem of linear equations in two variables for what problems of this section the upstream and downstream motion is very much important here in the question number five you can see that there is a problem related to upstream motion and downstream motion in the problem of six two women and five men can together finish a work in four days while three women and six men can finish it in three days find the time taken by one woman and one man alone to finish the work this is time and work type problem here at first you have to take the time taken by one woman as a day and for one man as y day and then you have to set linear equations and solve the problem similarly you can see that there is a problem related to area of rectangle you are given the length and breadth which is reduced and increased respectively by 5 units and 3 units then you have to set relations between them and you have to solve the problem so for the question number 8 this is based on the number that is you have to form a two digit number for two digit numbers you have to choose you have to assume the unit digit as well as the tens digit then you have to write down the number suppose you take the unit digit as x and the tens digit as y then the number will be 10y plus x and if you reverse the digits that is uh, tens digit is x and unit digit is y then the number will become 10x plus y so you have to solve these problems at first you try yourself if you can't solve then let me know in the comment box in the next chapter quadratic equation you have already learned the standard form of quadratic equation which is a x square plus b x plus c equals to 0 where a is not equals to 0 why a is not equals to 0 because if a becomes 0 then the coefficient of x square is 0 hence there is no terms of x square and hence the equation will not be a quadratic equation moving on you have to find out the solutions of quadratic equations only real roots by the methods of factorization and by using quadratic formula which is known as Siddharacharya's formula and the relationship between discriminant and the nature of the roots and obviously the what problem which are situational based problems on quadratic equations remember the middle term factor method to solve the quadratic equation and the quadratic formula that is Siddharacharya's formula which is x equals to minus b plus minus root over b square minus 4ac by 2a where b square minus 4ac is known as discriminant so by using these two formulae you can find out the solution of a quadratic equation remember for the first time in this session the method of completing square is taken out of the syllabus what was the, the relationship between discriminant and nature of the roots remember if the discriminant that is b square minus 4ac which is under a root in the in the quadratic formula gives us the nature of the roots of the quadratic equation that is if the discriminant becomes zero then we will get two equal roots of the equation if the discriminant is negative that is root over some negative number 
दैट इज रूट ओवर ऑफ सम नेगेटिव नंबर्स व्हिच इज नॉट ए रियल रूट सो इफ इफ द डिस्क्रिमिनेंट इज नेगेटिव देन द रूट्स आर नॉट रियल एंड इफ द डिस्क्रिमिनेंट इज ग्रेटर देन जीरो दैट इज पॉजिटिव देन we will get to unequal real roots now look at the question related to quadratic equation i have already given to find out the solutions in the question number 1 by using quadratic formula as well as factorization method so you have to just find the values by using these two methods or formula in the next question you have to find out the nature of the roots of the following equations that is you have to at first find out the discriminant that is b square minus 4ac b, b means the coefficient of x a is the coefficient of x square and c is the constant term if the discriminant is zero then the equation has equal roots if the equation has if the discriminant is greater than zero that is positive number then the equation has two real unequal roots and if the discriminant becomes negative then the equation has imaginary roots by using the relationship between discriminant and nature of the roots you have to find out the value of p for each case of the question number 3 next there are some what problems related to quadratic equation at first you have to set the equations and then you have to solve by any method for the question number 4 it is given that two taps together can fill a tank in 9 hole 3 by 8 hours the tap of larger diameter takes 10 hours less than the smaller one to fill the tank separately find the time in which each tap can separately fill the tank so you may consider the time as x for the smaller one to fill the tank separately then the larger diameter takes 10 hours less that is x minus 10 hours then set the equation and solve the problem in the question number 5 the marks of arun in hindi and english are given and they are and it is given some conditions assuming the marks of hindi or english as x and then the other marks will be 30 minus x you may set the equation and solve the problem for the problem 6 7 and 8 similarly you have to assume the unknown part as x and then you have to form the quadratic equation and solve by using the methods if there arise any problem related to any kind of given questions you may comment below so that i can help you in the next chapter that is arithmetic progressions which is the last chapter of our today's discussion from this chapter you may get some short questions as well as broad questions in your board's paper there are two main formula related to ap first one is the nth term of the ap which is denoted as an if the first term is a and the common difference is d then the nth term will be a n equals to a plus n minus 1 into d and the sum of n terms is denoted by s n which is equals to n by 2 into 2 a plus n minus 1 into d you may write the sum as s n equals to n by 2 into l plus a where l is the last term if we consider the nth term is l where l equals to a plus n minus 1 into d we know that a plus n minus 1 into d is an which is our 
nth term let's look at the problem in the question number one see how many terms of ap 45 39 33 must be taken so that their sum is 180 so at first you have to assume that there are n terms in that ap whose sum is 180 so here sn is given which is 180 and the first term is 45 that is a is 45 and common difference you can find out the common difference which is 39 minus 45 equals to minus 6 so by applying the formula of sum of the terms of an ap that is sn you can find out the number of terms in the question number two the mth term and the nth term are given you have to show that the m m into nth term is 1 so write down the formula of mth term and nth term then simplify and solve to show the required answer in the question number 3 you have to find out the number of terms and common difference of the ap where first term is given and the last term is given and the sum of its all all its terms is also given in the question number 4 you are given a series like 4 minus 1 by n plus 4 minus 2 by n plus 4 minus 3 by n plus up to n you have to find out the sum of n terms so basically you have to find out the common difference here and the first term is already given 4 minus 1 by n by applying the formula of sum of n terms you can find out the required answer similarly you are given question number 5 6 7 8 9 10 for according to the given hints you have to find out the answers of the problem so you have to do these problems to cover all the syllabus related to algebra so for the first 26 marks you have to do all these problems very carefully if there is any kind of problem then please do comment below I will help you as soon as possible in the next video we'll discuss about unit 3 and 4 that is coordinate geometry and geometry from where you can get 21 marks in your board exams all the best for your board exams work hard and don't be panic mathematics is a very easy subject if you understand the logic thanks for watching this video please like share and comment and obviously please do subscribe my channel strong math mention your query keep watching thank you